a day for remembering, inspired by the true events of the first Memorial Day. Written by Leah Henderson, illustrated by Floyd Cooper. Dark and sad will be the hour to this nation when it forgets to pay grateful homage to its greatest benefactors, the loyal soldiers who imperiled all for country and freedom. Frederick Douglass, 1871, Decoration Day Speech, Arlington National Cemetery, Virginia. In 1861, the United States of America was torn apart by a civil war, with the northern states, the Union, fighting the southern states, the Confederacy. The North wanted to keep the country intact, both North and South, and to ensure that all people were equal by abolishing slavery. The South did not agree, and these states sought to establish themselves as their own country, separate from the North, the Confederate States of America. They also sought to keep slavery. The war was fought for four years until 1865, when the Confederacy surrendered to the Union. The United States remained united and slavery was abolished. Memorial Day, originally called Decoration Day, was established to honor those who gave their lives while fighting in the Civil War. The holiday has since evolved to commemorate all American military personnel who have died in any and all wars. This is a story of what many consider the first Memorial Day celebration. Nine days in a row. Papa up early and gone again. I still can't go with him though, he said. Eli, school's where you need to be, reading and counting. But I am counting, right here, day nine. Not following after Papa is harder than holding a hot potato in my hands. He said important work has to be done, man's work. I rose on my toes, then pushing out my chin, stretching as tall as my 10 year old self could, but it made no difference. I imagine him out there standing up to folks who spit in our faces, call us names, or try to run us out of our home. Mad because we aren't enslaved no more. Or I think of him putting out fires and keeping order with the 21st Colored Infantry. Union soldiers, brown like us, who marched up Meeting Street holding their heads high in victory, especially ones who'd been enslaved here in Charleston. They were some of the first to come when the mayor surrendered the city to the Union. No use begging to follow Papa though. Mama will only fuss. Eli, you now have the hard earned right to learn and it's what's gonna get you beyond. Masters locked away learning cause knowledge is its own freedom. You're going to school and no more words are getting split about it. Before the war, Worry never let my insides alone. Always scared that mama or papa would get sold away, never to come back home. But today, papa comes home as night covers the sky, almost looking worse than after toiling in master's fields. But those days in the fields are over. Papa said, unlike some, we aren't going back because we aren't enslaved no more. We were digging and building and painting, he says after supper, digging, building, painting. But Papa isn't giving no more answers. Wake up Eli, today you're coming with me. Day 10. I spring out of bed like beans in a skillet and jump into my britches. Something important must be happening if Papa has let me miss even one second of school. My hard earned right. And Mama isn't putting up no fuss. With molasses smeared cornbread sliding down my throat, I ran to catch Papa. His long strides are met by others as more men join us, their boots crunching against pebbles on the hard road. My new schooling helps me count 28 men in all, shoulders back, chests out, then stomp along, ready to do the real important business Papa talks about. Business he thinks I'm old enough to do now, too. You need to see the work we're doing before it's all done, he says. We strut through the entrance at the Planters Racecourse, where white folks used to watch mighty horses run before the war. But it isn't a race course no more. For a while, the Confederates made it a jail. Mama and ladies from church used to sneak food to the Union soldiers held prisoner there. 
Skinny and sickly, those men hardly had more clothes than the most lonesome slave. A newspaper man said those poor souls had no covering but the sky and that they were heartsick, homesick, sick in body, sick in life. All because they fought against slavery and our God-given right to be free. So over the evening paper, Mama had learned to read in secret while enslaved. She promised, we'll share every morsel we get till we got no more. But the living are gone now, and the dead lie by our feet. Without a word, Papa and the other men get to digging, hammering, and cutting wood. Papa points to the fence where some of my schoolmates have joined their Papas too. Help with the whitewashing, Eli. I drag my feet though. Wanted to stay by Papa's side. But he rushes around doing more work in a minute than he's done in three hours on Master's Land. An old usher from our church pushes a painting brush in my hand and I get to work in two. As the sun beats our backs, the men sing in heavy, deep voices that rattle the dirt. Nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. When the sun starts slipping behind the trees, they raise an arc. Tired pinches my shoulders and my palms blaze, crisscrossed with tiny scrapes from a day's hard toil. But I don't pay the sting or ache no mind. We've done good work for the soldiers who lost their lives for our freedom. The next morning, before the roosters first gawks, I leap up. But I'm not going to school again today. None of us colored children are. This day is that important. My best mended pants and cleanest shirt wait on my blanket. Mama gathers up her basket full of Mayflower bundles. Papa straightens his hat and we leave our yard just as our neighbors leave theirs. Black faces, more than I've ever seen together, fill the streets with bouquets, crosses, and wreaths. I'm not sure a flower is left unpicked in Charleston. My schoolmates carry roses and hawthorns, but since I'm fastest at learning my numbers and letters, I get to carry the flag right out in front. I stomp, knees high, like the important colored soldiers did up Meeting Street. Mama strides in her best calico dress behind us with the woman, grinning, proud. I can't see Papa, but I know he is somewhere in the kilt of black, brown, and white faces. In lines stretching longer than a mile, we cross onto the old race course, singing with our fullest hearts. John Brown's body lies a moldering in the grave, but his soul goes marching on. Although we sing about John Brown, we are really singing for all the buried Union soldiers. After the last word is sung, quiet comes, our feet shushing around the sandy soil. We circle the fresh dirt mounds with sweet smelling petals of rose, lilac, and jasmine swirling to the ground. Thousands of hands sprinkle thousands of spring blossoms. The graves become a bed of petals and tears. The flag flaps in the breeze when I hand it off, as if waving goodbye to the Union soldiers finally at peace. Pastors preach sacrifice, abolitionists proclaim freedom, and officers bay at us to remember. Even though we are sad, we are celebrating too. My heart rests easy now. Me, Mama, and Papa can't never be sold away no more, and I'm getting my schooling. It's our freedom, like Mama said. So my insides feel all good. While breaking bread, we listen to more speeches about the martyrs of the race course and freedom. Blurry eyes praise a Union Brigade marching round the Pond of Blossoms. There's lots of head nodding and mm-hmm as families gather round the grandstand remembering, shedding tears, and giving thanks above. The flag never stops waving, but all my old slave time worry flies away. And as the moon joins in, we leave the race course with empty hands and near bursting hearts hoping those Union soldiers, hugged by Charleston's sweetest blossoms, know we will never forget what they've given of themselves for the priceless gift of our liberty.